Well, as an old school Robotech fan, I'm excited to take a look at Robotech Force of Arms, a two player card game. First off, a big thanks to Solar Flare Games for sending us a copy of this game. All right, Robotech Force of Arms was designed by Dave Killingsworth and features artwork from Andorra Sidonia, Andrew Kramer, and Well Lopez. It was published in 2018 by Solar Flare Games. Now, this is a two player competitive card game set during the Macross and Macross era of Robotech. Uh, this is the first series in the Robotech franchise, for those of you who don't know it like I do. Uh, this game recreates a space battle between the invading Zentradi Battle Force and the defending Robotech Defense Force, and includes a number of iconic ships and characters from the well-known anime series. Single game of this is a quicker filler, takes about half an hour. Now, to get a look at the cards and other components included in Robotech Force of Arms, be sure to check out our unboxing video on YouTube. So the main thing you get in this box, of course, are cards. Uh, two decks of cards, including a couple reference cards. One deck for the RDF, the Robotech Defense Force, and one for the Zentradi. Card quality here is really nice. Uh, actually higher than I expected for a small box game. Has a nice linen finish on it that's nice to the touch. Means the cards aren't going to get damaged or scratched up. Though I gotta admit, they're not great for taking pictures. They are a bit reflective. In addition to the cards, there's a 15-page rulebook and a number of counters. Now, to be fair, we weren't honestly expecting all that much from this game. It's a relatively small box card game from an established but not well-known publisher. So the fact that they put the effort into quality components was a welcome touch. Now, there's no board needed to play Robotech Force Arms. It's a card game only. You start by taking four ship cards from each player, your capital ships, shuffling them. You place the empty space card in the middle of the table, and then deal out the eight ships in a random pattern, making a three by three grid. Players then take the cards and counters for their faction, shuffle the combat cards and flip one up to determine who start player is, who's higher player. Uh, start player, or sorry, who wins that decides if they want to be the first or second player. Each turn, the first thing you're going to do is you have to move one of your ships. So you're going to pick one of your ships in the 3x3 three three grid and swap it with one other card, whether that's another one of your ships, the enemy ship, or the empty space card. Then you're going to play two of your combat cards somewhere on the outside of the grid, lining up in a column either or row with the ships that are out there. Each player owns two sides of the grid. So I'm going to play, say, this side and that side, and my opponent's going to play the opposite two sides. And each row or column can only hold two cards. When you're playing your cards, you can even play them together into two different rows or columns. Now, these combat cards all show various Robotech mecha and all have either an attack stat shown like an attack burst or a defense stat shown with a shield, and then they're numbered 1, 2, 6. Both players' decks are identical mechanically, though they do feature different art. So you have 1 to 6 in attack and 1 to 6 in defense. Now, in most cases, you're going to play these cards face down, but a number of them can be played face up which gives away what cards you're playing where to your opponent. But by doing this, you actually earn counters. Now, these are different little counters that give you some type of bonus. There's attack counters that give you a bonus to attack. Defense counters give you a bonus to defense. Ship lock tokens that you can place on a ship so it can't be moved around the board. And then, of course, being Robotech, there are protoculture tokens. These count as a plus to attack or defense. If you put them on your ships, they're defense. On the opponent's ships, they're attack. In addition, players do also have spy tokens. Those are used to cancel another player's use of playing a token. So if someone goes to put a defense token on your ship, you're like, nope, I use a spy. We saw that coming. Or you go to put um, you go to put a ship lock on the SDF-1, and you're like, no, 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 we had a spy. You don't get to lock my SDF-1. Play continues going around, right, around the tables, two people back and forth, um, until everyone's cards are played. So it is worth noting, every combat card is played every game. You ha are going to put all of them out, and it ends up that every location is going to have two cards in it by the end of the game. Okay, so you're moving ships, playing cards, and collecting tokens. Um, but maybe I'm missing something, but what is it you're trying to achieve? <laughs> what exactly is the goal of the game? All right, so this is one of those things where the game will make sense once I get to the scoring phase. Uh, so it all goes down to what you're trying to do 
is the ships in the middle are your capital ships and they're moving around in this grid that represents space. The ships on the outside are all your fighters, right? All your mecha, all your, your Zentradi battle pods and all that. And they are trying to attack the opponent's ships or defend your ships or both. So it's all a matter of trying to line up the grid so that your ships in that row and column are doing whatever you want them to do, whether it's attacking the opponent or defending your ships. So that's kind of the summary of what you're trying to do. So once you've got all the ships are out, a battlefield set, you now have what's called a token face. So as I said, when you play some ships face up, you're in tokens. Well, here's where you put the tokens on the battlefield. It's going to go in player order. You're going to place token. I'm going to place token back and forth until they're all placed. Now, after the token phase, you're going to take all of your command cards and all your hero cards. These are things tied to actual things that happened in the series and actual main characters from the show, right? So you got a Bree tie and a Rick Hunter. Each deck has four of these. So there's four heroes and four command cards in each, each faction. You're going to pick two command cards and one hero to play. Now, what these cards do is they basically mess with what's already up on the board. So you're going to move tokens, you're going to place new tokens, you're going to swap the locations of ships. Uh, for example, the RDF can convert the SDF-1 into its like mecha form. There's, these are all things that are tied to the series. Now, what's interesting to note here is, unlike most of the games so far, these are not quite symmetrical. Like, I, I, I don't want to really say they're asymmetric because they're not very different. But, like, for example, the RDF will have a card that adds defense tokens to their ships. Whereas the Zentradi matching card that's similar instead attack, adds attack tokens instead of defense tokens. So they're, they're slight changes, but they're really close. So now, basically, with the uh, a token round done, you are you have gone through and you've you've planned out your strategy, and now you take these new cards and undo everything your opponent did as much as possible. Essentially, uh, sort of. Uh, see, the whole thing is you're you're either undoing what your opponent's done or you're backing up what you did. But you only do get to play three cards, and the cards do only have somewhat minor effect. Like the most powerful cards add or remove up to four tokens on different ships. So you are modifying things but it's somewhat instead of much of what you've undone so you're tweaking a couple of the battles like a couple of the the areas on the grid okay. now once you played all the command and hero cards are played you get to the scoring round this is uh, i wouldn't say the meat of the game it's, it's more of a resolution round so what you're gonna do is flip over all the combat cards and you basically sit and do some math you look at each ship on the grid then you add up the attack value for all the attackers in the same row and column you add up the defense value for all the defenders in the same row and column. You then account for the um, the tokens that were played and figure out who has the highest total. Now, each of the ships also has a defense value that has to be breached. So that actually helps the defender out to keep their own cards. And the way it works out is if the attacker has more points the defenders than the defender had, they destroy the ship and they take the card to show they destroyed it. Now, if the defender has more defense than the attacker's attack points, they've defended their ship and they keep the card. If the totals are tied, the battle's considered a draw on the ship that stays on the board. Now, every ship has a victory point token in the corner, and all you do is you do the math. You add up the cards you got compared to your opponent, your opponent got, and whoever has the highest total won the battle. That space battle in Robotech is done. So... After a bunch of randomness and a bunch of messing with each other and then a bunch of undoing and redoing whatever you did the first time, you play some Sudoku and then whoever has the most points at the end wins. I get it. I don't see the Sudoku reference. Uh, Sudoku, you're not adding <laughs> stuff up. But yeah, I guess you have the grid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess with the, with the <laughs> edges. So as Sean kind of just summarized, what you've got here is a pretty simple, very mathy game, very math-based. Like, to be honest, this is the kind of game that Rainer Nitzia was famous for back in the tw uh, like the year 2000, and is still well known for. And, I, like, if no one, if I didn't see who designed this, if someone made me guess, I would have guessed this was a Nitzia game. I have to assume Mr. Killingsworth is at least somewhat inspired by Nitzia games, like, especially Kingdom. This really reminds me of Kingdom, or the later re-themed Beowulf the board game. That's the game this reminds me the most of. Now, while the game is pretty simple to teach and learn, you do have to watch out for those attack and defense icons. Um, ships with attack icons only add to your total 
when attacking. And while ships that defend only add to your total with defending. And it's easy to make the mistake of you're going to add up all your combat ships. Like I'm defending, so I add up all my ships and I'm attacking, add up all my ships. You only get to attack, add the ships that apply for that particular type. So if you're, you're fighting over an opponent's card, your attack cards matter. And if you're fighting over your own card, your defense card matter. Now I note this specifically because someone got this wrong in our first play and it did kind of ruin the experience. Now, once you do have the rules down, you've got that figured out. The game does play quick. Uh, it doesn't take up a lot of room, which is something I appreciate. This could be a coffee table game, right? This is something I could see playing at a coffee shop. Um, I wouldn't personally bring it to a pub because there's lots of cards and you don't want cards getting wet. But, you know, a coffee table where you can keep the drinks far away. Um, really what you're ending up with is a four by four grid. Would it be five? Five by five grid. Because a three by three and then the outside edges. So it's pretty small. Um, while there is some strategy to the game in trying to decide where to place your combat cards. And there's a bit of a bluffing element, right? Where, where, where they put their six is that an attack card is a defense card due to the fact that your cards are probably going to swap places every turn. So every turn, two ship cards are moving. One of them might be the empty space, but like two of those are going to change. And the fact the range of the combat cards is from one to six, which means like there, there's a lot of randomness in this game. Like despite the fact the first turn you put, put out your six attack and right now it's lined up with all of the enemy ships by the time you get to the end of the game all those ships will move it, it where your six is like someone might put something there but it seems to be it's more happenstance like they happen to move their ship back to your six not that you made a good plan to get them to move to your six and then there's the command and hero cards that add to this because it's going to let players make some last minute changes to the battlefield and that can quickly ruin some best laid plans now, I think some people are going to love that aspect, right? Like, especially in a quick half-hour game, people like random elements in a half-hour game. It's definitely better than playing a three-hour game, and then you get to the end and some random element changes it. And for me, though, and for Deanna, I think we both would have preferred more control over our destinies, more actual, the strategy and tactics paying off more than the random elements. Another somewhat minor complaint about the game is the lack of theme. Like, yes, it's Robotech, but there's not a lot here that says Robotech other than the artwork and the names of things and the fact I recognize the characters. Yeah, you're playing out a space battle with big capital ships and you're attacking and defending with waves of light fighters on the periphery of battle. So you do kind of get that there. And the swapping of ships kind of feels like capital ships maneuvering around, I guess. It's just a bit like it's just a bit Robotech, right? Like it's not the opposite. Like the theme doesn't not mesh like it's not like there's there's a disparity where you're like oh this theme doesn't fit this no it just it's not tied very strongly like i could easily probably in an hour retheme this entire game to be any mass battle like if i wanted to do the romans facing off the carthaginians it really wouldn't be hard overall robotech force of arms is a decent quick filler i do like the decision points in the game and I like the way the mechanics work. I like the math. I like doing the cross, like I'm trying to figure out my two ships versus your, or sorry, my four ships versus your four ships. Uh, the high amount of basic math in the game really does remind me of something from uh, Rainier Nitzia. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I like Nitzia's games. Despite some strategy being required, though, it does have a rather high randomness factor. And this is going to be a bane or boon, depending on your personal preference and the person to put, playing with. For us, I would have preferred more strategy, less randomness. While it's not the most thematic Robotech game out there, the artwork and characters do give you a bit of a feel of playing out an epic space battle between the invading Zentradi and the Robotech Defense Force. Well, I think this one is definitely going to be a pass for me, but who should pick this game up? Well, it's going to depend mainly on how much you care about Robotech and the Robotech license. Plus, if you're looking for a mathy quick filler, or if you're not. If you collect everything Robotech and haven't heard about this game, because obviously not many people have based on how many people have reviewed it and looked at it on Board Game Geek, go ahead and add it to your collection. Like, this is definitely not a bad game. There are only a handful of Robotech games out there worth having. And not only, and, and this is worth playing, unlike some other Robotech games that may have been published by other publishers. It's a light filler game. Uh, it's a pretty solid abstract light filler game. We had fun playing it. Um, my original plan was to keep it. Like, it was good enough, and it was Robotech, and I like Robotech. Then, though, I discovered the next game, the next Robotech game from Solar Flare, called Robotech Crisis Point. And once I discovered that, I started to rethink my idea of keeping the original. 
Now you're going to have to check out our review of that to see why it's making me reconsider my choice to keep Force of Arms. Now, if you don't like math heavy abstract games with themes that are barely tied to the mechanic, don't bother. Like, there's no reason. This isn't going to win you over. This isn't like the, the be all end all. This might get more people to play abstract mathy games. Now, Kingdoms might have done that for you from Nidzia, but, but for Robotech fans, there's enough here to like that I think it's at least worth checking out. Give it a play or just get it as a collector to have another Robotech piece of Robotech in your home. Well, be sure to check out our written review of Robotech Force of Arms by heading over to tabletopbellhop.com and clicking on Reviews.